They say that it's never too late to save for your retirement. And I did leave mine pretty late. So last year, when I was 49, I decided that I really needed to address this issue. Now, I've never really had any pensions education or retirement or investing um, education. So my feeling was always that pensions and stocks and shares ISAs are bad because it's like gambling. You put your money in, you have no guarantee what you're going to get back. You may get nothing at all. So I've done quite a lot of reading up on what may and may not work. And additionally to that, I have never, well for most, for most of my working life, I've never been in a position to put money into uh, a pension or a stocks and shares ISA. So I've never had a job where I had a workplace pension and it never crossed my mind. I never thought about getting out a private pension. I didn't understand it. I don't think I'd ever heard of it. And as I have got older, my realisation <laughs> that whilst to a certain extent I may be able to rely on inheritance, I don't want to put all my eggs into that basket because what if it doesn't? There's no guarantee. Uh, there's no guarantee I'll get anything. There's no guarantee I will get much. Uh, you have no idea what's going to happen. So I need to fend for myself. I'm a grown adult. So we have the state pension. I don't retire for another 20 years. I am now, well, I'm now 50, let's say 20 years. Um, there's a lot of speculation about how the age of retirement will change in terms of the state pension. Um, so I'm, I've picked out a ballpark figure of age 70. But provided I still have my health, uh, physical and mental, and I'm able to, I would probably keep on working to some extent because I'm not the kind of person who can just sit around. I like to be doing. And since I became self-employed 12 years ago, I have got used to working on my own. I am used to uh, making my own schedules. I'm used to running things myself. And in the last two years or so, I have become very interested in side hustles. Um, particularly remote side hustles, so the sorts of things that you can do from anywhere. So my business started to decline a little bit in the cost of living crisis and since then business has been down and I've just filled the gap. I like running my business, it doesn't cost me out of pocket, it's always in profit but it's a small amount and I didn't want to end it because it's a creative outlet that I need in my life and I've always had for God knows how many years I started making clothes and I was about 12 and it's never ended. And in its own way, it's a side hustle because of the amount of money it makes. And so I've just added to the side hustle list. So although that isn't one that I can particularly do remotely, I need to have the machinery and all the stock and all that sort of thing. When I am, well, wherever I am, I can do the other side hustles that I do. So I have the, the surveys, um, I have uh, interest on savings, and all these little things add up into what is basically now a much more comfortable income for me. Because two years ago, three years ago, my income dropped to 9,000 a year. I was filling the gap with savings which I should have been putting aside for retirement and for emergencies and I knew it had to stop and sometimes I do leave things far longer before I deal with them but I always have a snapping point and go right now this has to be done and then I'm galvanized into action. I started to look last year at a private pension. I know when I Theoretically, what I will get from the state pension, no guarantee that will even exist, let alone how much it will be worth. But let's take a ballpark figure and take the state pension when I retire 
theoretically, at 70, theoretically, as what it now is. I don't have a huge amount of money to invest in a pension. And of course, once you put your money into a pension, you can't get at it until you retire. So you need to think carefully about how much you are throwing into it. So because I am not a taxpayer, there is a limit on what the, the government will add to my contributions. So I can put in 2,880 a year to a private pension and the government will top me up on that amount. And that means that I have 3,600 a year going into a pension. Um, to make sure I was topped up by the end of this tax year, I took some of my savings, it wasn't a huge amount, and topped it up so that by the end of the tax year, um, this year, which has just gone, I was topped up for the year. So now I'm starting again and I'll be putting £192 a month in. And that will give me, that, that's giving me a projected figure of um, what I may get if I retired uh, at 70. And I've put down not to start taking the money until 70. I've also included uh, just to take an annuity. So I'm not going to take the 25%. Because if I just take that, the pension that's left will keep accruing. And that means that although the pension pot is smaller, it will last longer because I'm not taking out a massive chunk of it. It will keep accruing uh, interest on it, uh, investments on it, and hopefully that will keep going until I die. It's not going to be a huge amount based on what I can put in and based on what the figures I'm being given are I will get about 86,000 but that could all change I might be able to put another extra stash of money into it at some point who knows what will happen in the next 20 years. Now obviously that is not enough um, I think if I took an annuity of it it'll, it'll give me about 3,000 or something a year that will top up my state pension assuming it is what it is now uh, because we have no figures to work off. So what I decided to do after that and uh, I've gone for a managed fund on the pension because I do not understand investments. I understand how and why it happens. I don't know how to trade and there's no point in me trying to do that. So I have gone with a managed stakeholder pension from one of the well-known high street brands um, and that will manage it for me and I can look online and see how things are doing. I always have the option to change, I can change the risk levels, I can change if I decide I want to manage it myself, um, I can add more money when I want and I don't get penalised for that, um, I can transfer it, I can do all sorts of things to it. So it's a nice flexible way for me to add to what will be something of a, a retirement fund. But obviously that isn't enough. So at the end of so once once I had created the uh, the pension, I'd started paying into it. It's happening. That's now an ongoing thing that I, that just d deals with itself. I decided that a stocks and shares ISA is probably going to be my next best thing. Now the difference between the pension and the stocks and shares ISA really is that I can still get at the stocks and shares money. So. All the money that I'm investing into retirement funds, so to speak, is from savings. Now, I have some savings, and each year I put them into a fixed bond. I find the highest rate easy access I can find, so that some of it I've locked away at higher rates, and at the end of the year I get it back, and then I reinvest it in safe funds. So, fixed, fixed rates, there's no... Um, there's no shares, there's no stocks, there's no gambling on the market. It is, I stick it in for a year and I know what I'm going to get at the end. That's very safe and that's how I've always worked because I've always been scared about not having enough money. And very often I have not had enough money. So I've hung on to those savings that I have. And now that I have increased my income, I'm no longer dipping into savings to keep myself going. So I've been able to look at different aspects of my life. So I have a fully paid up emergency fund, six months of all my bills in case something happens. 
and I have started a car fund because although there's nothing wrong with my car now it is now 12, 12 years old and I'm still starting to think about how I'm going to be able to afford another car when mine finally dies. The chances of me getting credit like I did when I first bought, bought my first car uh, which was a brand new car off the forecourt I paid a small deposit and paid HP for three years at no interest. That deal I very much doubt still exists and it certainly won't exist for me. So I need to think about how I managed to buy a car without getting into debt because I do not want a loan with an interest rate. I do not want to be paying extra for a vehicle and car prices are up. I don't want an electric car, I want a petrol car so I'm going to struggle to find that as well probably. So I've started a car fund to act as a cash payment. Now I probably won't have have a full fund by the time I need a car because at the moment I've got about four and a half thousand in it and what I have done I've got um, I I discovered this is not like me I found out I had an empty savings account which I had put aside because I didn't think the rates were good enough and it's with Yorkshire Building Society and it's paying five percent on the first ten thousand you put in so I've put in my emergency savings and my car fund into that to hit the 10,000 and then I'm going to allow that to keep accruing interest for as long as that 5% interest, 5 interest lasts because obviously inflation's happening so my emergency, my six months of emergency funds will have to go up every year because the price of things just keep going up and it's better to have more than not enough and then for the car fund the same thing and if I, as and when I can top up the car fund I will but for now I have my six months of emergency savings which are accruing some interest in this Yorkshire Building Society account. I also have a car fund which is also accruing some interest. And that, that Yorkshire Building Society um, is an access account but it's two withdrawals a year and after that you lose the interest. So that means that I will not touch that money but if I need it, it is there. If the car goes, that fund is there. If something happens, my six months of emergency fund is there. I haven't locked it away so I can't get at it. I can. But it's away and it's earning its own interest. So those two things which are important savings goals for me are satisfied, basically. Um, so it's a case of looking at, so those are put away. I always want to keep a savings balance available for whatever because you never know when something might go wrong with a car I might suddenly need to move I might suddenly need like I blew up my laptop at Christmas what happens if something happens to my phone I need a new mobile phone so I've I do have a balance in a, a, a very easy access savings account and all the money that comes in on a daily weekly monthly basis I put straight into this account that it's earning. It's recently dropped from 5% to 4.90, and that's with tandem, but I'm still earning a reasonable interest rate on it because I stash every spare penny. I don't keep balances in my current accounts, except where I know there is a bill going out because I monitor my accounts very carefully. And the only things that go in and out of my bank accounts are bills standard bills that I know are coming so I've got no reason to go overdrawn on anything so I only keep money in current accounts when I know, I know bills are due everything else I stash in the easy access and I have open banking so it's very easy for me to switch money around at a moment's notice money will appear in an account in probably about less than an hour they're really really quick so I'm accruing as much interest as I can on that now I have another fixed bond coming out at the end of April and I have a small one coming out later in the year and I also have a Santander uh, an edge saver which pays 7% uh, on £4,000 uh, and that I've had f uh, since last year that account only lasts a year so in September that account will that offer that 7% will end and that money will be reabsorbed back into my uh, tandem savings account so throughout the year there are going to be other small pots of savings that are coming out which I don't need to hang on to 
because I have a healthy balance in my easy access savings for everything else. So I can afford to drop some of that money into retirement funds and not miss it. So I have now started uh, my Stocks and Shares ISA. I only applied for it at the beginning of this month, so the first payment isn't coming out until the middle of April. I'm only going with a £25 a month um, payment. However, at the end of April, there will be a chunk of money going into that, uh, which will... Uh, I've already paid... Uh, yeah, so I've already taken out the money from emergency savings and put that away. So half of that um, fixed bond that's coming out at the end of the month has already been reallocated because I have a high easy access savings balance anyway. So the other half of it will come out at the end of April when that fixed bond ends and I will be putting that into the ISA. So although I'm only paying regularly £25 a month to be cautious, there will be a big chunk of money going in at the end of April to increase that account. And then again, when I have the smaller fixed bond coming out in, um, I think it's August, that will go in there as well. And that account now has a healthier balance plus the regular direct debits. And I can see the projection of how much that potentially could accrue in 20 years. And again, I'm treating that as a fine, as a, a retirement fund. So my idea is that will be a savings fund that I don't touch for 20 years until I retire. And again, once that comes out, I imagine just taking, um, instead of reinvesting um, the money that I make on, on the initial capital back into stocks and shares, which I'm doing at the moment, when I hit that retirement time, I will change that so that everything I've earned from the capital, on whatever I earn each month, gets drawn down as earnings and I can put that towards whatever my retirement is. Theoretically, looking at how that potentially may work out, because of course they give you projections, but I'm talking 20 years. If it was as is it is now in 20 years, I would be on a retirement of about £18,500, which is more than I'm earning now. And that doesn't account for any potential inheritance, any potential change of living arrangements, etc, etc. There are so many unknowns in the next 20 years of my life that I can only do small things um, that don't damage my financial well-being at the moment. So I'm being quite cautious with putting money into both of these retirement options that I've now set up, the pension and the ISA, because I don't want to suddenly find I've thrown all my spare money at it and I have nothing left in case things go wrong. Because my income is still quite low, uh, although I, I run the business, obviously it's come down, things may well improve in the next couple of years, who knows how things may change. I have the cleaning work at the moment, I'm not doing very much of it because I don't feel like I need to. There's a guaranteed income there, that could go up, that could go down. And I have all these little side hustles, so I'm now earning from YouTube. I do surveys and market research. I have the um, uh, medical evaluations work that I do sporadically throughout the year, which is a very good income. I have passive income from all the other interests that I have on easy access savings. So three years ago, my income was 9,000 and I was having to top up from all my savings. Last year, I hit, uh, I think, 14,000 and I didn't have to use any of my savings because my basic ins and outs are less than that. And this year, if all the projections go the way I think they will, I will probably be earning about 18,000, 19,000 this year. And then I can start adding some of that to my retirement funds, um, whether it's the pension and locking it away or whether it's the ISA and seeing that money increase over time. It does feel a bit like gambling, um, and I'm, but I'm not as nervous about it as I thought I would be. I think when I had less information and I didn't understand it, I spent a lot of time talking to my dad about pensions over Christmas. My parents have been retired for years. My dad has workplace pensions, private pensions. He dabbles in stocks and shares. So I was able to ask him some information and get him to look at paperwork and tell me what do you think of this. 
Um, I don't have a financial advisor, I can't be bothered with all that, I don't think it's necessary and I've gone with a well-known brand to manage my funds and I've gone with the same brand for the pension and the ISA and in both cases I've gone with their managed funds so they do it for me um, because I don't have the knowledge, I don't understand how it works, I want to play safe still uh, but this is still, you know, it's all an unknown. I mean, if you're going to gamble on, on the stock market, you have no idea what you're going to end up with. So I'm trying to be cautious, but give myself better options. Now, who knows how work will change over the next 20 years. And as I say, provided I am fit and healthy, when I hit that 70 years retirement, and I start drawing down on these various little investments and I get the state pension, whatever that may or may not be. If I am able to, I will keep working. So these little remote side hustles that I have, like taking surveys, uh, like running YouTube, why not? Why can't I still be doing those in 20 years? And that will give me more income. And if I am earning like that, in, like I am now in 20 years, that's going to be a pretty good retirement fund and it will also mean for the first time in quite a while I will be paying tax because of course they tax you on your pensions and I could say how I feel about that because for most people who pay into their pensions they've already been taxed on the income and then getting taxed on it again in later years is a bit of a government wheeze but um, what do I know? So that is how I have planned for retirement, basically at 50, giving myself 20 years, playing it safe, playing it safe, sorry, and also looking after myself. You need to look after your, your health uh, in every possible way to make sure that you are able to be as independent as possible when you're older. I'm going to need my health because I'm going to have to keep working, so I need to look after myself. I need to be able to, even if it's just filling out surveys on a smartphone I need to be able to do that to keep that extra money coming in so there's all these things that I'm constantly thinking about looking after myself how can I plan and also planning whilst having to be very mindful about not overburdening myself with money going out that I can't reaccess when I also need to live now um, I don't want to go back into full-time work and say I'll just go and work for 20 years and cream off as much money as I can and throw it into a workplace pension or whatever it is. I don't want to do that. I like the lifestyle I now have. The lifestyle I now have pays for my life. That's fine. I don't want for much in the world. I don't want to go gallivanting. I don't want to buy, you know, premium clothes or premium food. I'm very happy with the way things are as a general uh, as a general thing but increasing income from my side hustles would be good now things like YouTube it's very early days I've only been uh, I've only I've just had well I've just earned my third month from YouTube so it's incredibly early days but the income does make a small difference surveys continues to be an earner and I can slot that in around whatever else I'm doing because it's just on a phone it's nice and easy the passive income from I mean I think of YouTube as a passive income because I'd be doing this whether I was getting paid or not so that's kind of a passive income save his interest is a passive income there's all these other little things going on which just go into the same bucket uh, income is income for me it doesn't really matter as long as I'm not ruining my quality of life. I'm happy with the way things are. I have the autonomy to, to make the choices. And that's where I am at the moment. So I've spent the last couple of years increasing my income and now I have an income that means I'm not having to use my savings to uh, back up a very basic lifestyle. That's really important. And one of the things that I know that I need to do is repair some of the damage that I've done to my savings because I have spent over the last 12 years since I've been self-employed I have spent far more of it than I should have done but like I said I have a snapping point where I reach a point and go enough is enough and sometimes that snapping point can take quite a while 
but things were going very well up until COVID. And then I had a good year in COVID because um, people went started buying online and people got into crafting and stuff. And I made good, good money that year, in fact. And it's since then that things have started to drop. So it's only really been 2021, 22, 23 and now 24 that things have been slower. And that's where I've been investigating all my other little side hustles that I now do that now pay the difference. And it means I get to do all the things I like to do. And um, and I'm not in debt. I have no debt at all. So, I feel like I've done everything that I needed to do. The profit pension is set up. The stocks and shares ISA is set up. Where possible, extra money will go in, but they all have monthly direct debits. Um, I have protected myself with my six months of emergency savings. I have partially protected myself against what will happen with the car at some point and I will continue to add to that fund in small amounts and I still have at easy access to extra funds should something happen. Maybe, you know, um, like over the last few years a, f a couple of things have gone wrong on the car that have needed to be paid for. They're not, they've not been huge bills, we're talking like £500, whatever, for a new exhaust. And little things like that will go wrong. My car lives out. It's had a hard-ish life, although not so much now. So I need to know that I'm fully protected. And that if something happens, like the washing machine goes, I can just go and buy one. I don't panic about it. I'm never sitting there thinking, I really hope nothing goes wrong this year because I'd be screwed. I'm not. Um, and that financial peace of mind is one of the most important things that I have done for myself in the last few years because being worried about not being able to afford to pay your rent, pay your bills, getting into debt is terrifying. I mean, when you look at what's happened since COVID and how many people have lost their homes and their livelihoods and I've had no control over it because they haven't had enough backup. It's been absolutely terrifying. And I do not want to be in that situation. I've experienced it before. I know what it's like. I've been there and I don't want to go back there ever. Being financially independent is the most important thing I have done for myself in the last three or four years. And it just makes me so much happier because I don't have to worry about it. So if you are of my age or approaching my age or slightly above my age and you're sitting there thinking, oh God, you don't need an awful lot of money to be able to invest in putting together some semblance of a retirement. It's not going to pay for a luxury lifestyle. My aim was always, in the short term, how can I top up the state pension? That, was, have, that has been my first goal. So my first goal is now complete. I am paying into two retirement funds which will top it up. Not an enormous amount of money, but it will top it up, which will mean that I ha will have a slightly better um, retirement lifestyle than I would have had if I'd just had the state pension. And that's where the idea of, you know, it's never too late to save comes from because, you know, an extra thousand, thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, three thousand pounds a year topping up the state pension could be the difference between, you know, being able to just live and not be able to live. And it depends on what your expenses are. Most not all, but a lot of people by the time they hit retirement don't have um, mortgages to pay, their bills will be different, there are certain things you can get free as an elderly person, so you might not need a car anymore because the buses are all free, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is that makes a difference. But take a careful look at how how things will change, where you live, where you might be living, who you might be living with or not living with, how your lifestyle will, ch style will change, how you can build in any incomes that you have now into retirement or semi-retirement or whatever it else it is that you do. So that's my take on starting a retirement fund at 50. This is not financial advice. This is just my personal experience that I've had over the last uh, four or five months. That's all it is. That is all the experience I have. Um, but I hope it might give some of you some ideas 
I'm putting £192 a month into a stakeholder pension. I'm putting £25 a month into a stocks and shares ISA. And both those things will make a difference over a course of 20 years. You just have to be disciplined. If you know that you can spare that money by not buying your daily coffee at Starbucks, by not shopping on Amazon, by not buying rubbish down the pound shop, by stopping purchases that you don't need because you've got into this shopping addiction. If you can imagine that all that money that you waste on rubbish at the shops that you don't actually need went into you having a better retirement that you were less worried about or even sticking it into an ISA just as a savings account. Think of the difference that will make. We don't value saving enough and the the quality of life that actually gives. Shopping for tat in Amazon does not give you the quality of life that knowing you can pay your bills on time does. Um, but it's one of those things that you don't understand until you do it. I've got out of the shopping mindset and I get a lot more buzz and a lot more excitement and a lot more joy out of seeing my bank account numbers going up because I saved the money. And I never used to be like that, but I, I've got into a habit of I actually enjoy hoarding money. It's very small amounts, you know, I'm not a billionaire for heaven's sakes. I'm not, you know, Branson or one of those. It's small amounts of money, but it does give me a buzz to know that, oh my God, it's one less thing I have to worry about. So consider it, think about it, it's, um, it's a quality of life that I never thought I would have just in the knowledge that I am more secure than I was and I didn't have that for the first 42 years of my life. And I wish I had, and I wish I had planned better, I wish I had understood better, I wish I had understood that sticking 20 quid a month into private pension when I hit 25 or something would have made an enormous difference now. I wouldn't have to be putting away the savings that I do now because I would have had an semblance of a decent retirement fund. Uh, but I don't. There's no point in regretting something you haven't done long after you should have done it. It's what you do now. And 20 years is still a long time. You can do a lot with 20 years if you put your mind to it and if you want to. So that's my update and I think that's quite enough information to be going on with. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, um, please don't post and say, oh, you should have put it in gold, put cash under the bed, don't trust anybody. You can't trust anyone these days, you can only do what you can do. Um, any actual useful advice where I can go with this would be interesting to see. Um, particularly interested in hearing from people that are at the same stage as me as well who have either made changes or are thinking about making changes or have been are just sitting there worrying about this and are thinking actually I could afford to lose 25 quid a month in stocks and shares ISA or maybe I could put 100 quid a month into a stakeholder pension um, because anything is better than nothing right now and if you have that time to plan and you can afford a semi-retirement or you're just looking for a state pension top up this could be the key to you being less worried about that situation so do add comments i'll be really interested to hear what everyone has to say about this um it's the sort of thing that i uh, like i'll type it into to google or i'll type this as a as a subject into youtube and i never quite see the information that i need or i don't understand what they're saying because they, they, they're they talking about guilt and this and that and the other and I, I don't get that. I want layman's perspective because I am not a financial genius and I think most of us probably aren't. Uh, so I decided to make this very simple straightforward video because I don't see anyone talking about it like this and it may be that I'm just not typing in the right things into YouTube so if you see videos that are like mine where people have done similar things um, let me know. Um, when you add a share link to another YouTube video, it'll put it in my blocked um, blocked listing because it's not sure what that is. But if you can tell me the channel where I need to go, 
or the title of the video I'll go and find it and I'll have a look because I would love to find channels that are talking about things like that in the way I do which is the simplest language possible because that's the level that I'm at all I'm trying to do is plan for my future so thank you for watching I hope you found this useful um, I will keep adding to this as I go. I'm sure there will be updates on uh, things. Um, I mean, retirement funds, um, stocks and shares, all that sort of stuff takes years to develop and apparently they drop in value before they go up. So it's one of those things that you, you have to invest for a long term to make your money. You can't just stick it in for a couple of years and think, oh, I've made my money. It won't happen. So I'm in this for the long haul. This is a 20 year plan with also accruing post-retirement, post-70 as well. So you need to try and understand that as well. This is not a quick fix. This is the future. This is like putting into a workplace pension where you know that it's going to sit there forever. So, yeah, I hope you found it useful and um, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.